Nelson. I'm here at Piano Trends and I'm with the uh, Casio Grand Hybrid, the GP500. Why a Grand Hybrid? Well, it's a hybrid because it has the most accurate mechanical action of a grand piano you're going to find that you plug in the wall. It's a full-sized Austrian spruce key stick with the right pivot point, so the feel is accurate. And because Casio is not a traditional piano company, we're not beholden to one piano manufacturer's sound. So we see three cities here, three famous European pianos. I have the Berlin, which is a Beckstein. I also have a Hamburg, famous German piano, and a famous Austrian piano as well for its rich low end and I don't have just one version of each of those if I press the Vienna ba grand button again I get a mellow version press it again and I get a bright version and the same with the other two pianos so as you can probably tell I like a little bit of uh, jazz now and then so if I dial up the Hamburg grand mellow perfect piano to express that that tonal quality that I'm looking for. So after you find the sound that you really love, the next thing you want to adjust in the piano usually is how it responds to your playing style. So for that I'm going to go right into settings, the keyboard, and I see there's a parameter here that says touch response. Right now it's set to normal. I'm kind of a heavier player so I might choose heavy touch number one which just means I have to work a little harder for the loudest notes. Now for the beginner, I would go in the other direction. I would choose light number one, or even perhaps light number two. And it makes it easier to get to those loud notes for weaker fingers that are still developing. I have a library of instruments besides the three great pianos. I have electric pianos. I have a wonderful honky-tonk piano. Um, we have more electric pianos. Harpsichord. We have a wonderful vibraphone. Gorgeous strings. About three dozen instruments in all, and the beauty part is that I can layer any two instruments. Just the volume of each of those independently and when I find the winning sound I can record everything as a performance right to a USB thumb drive. Stop that. It's giving that a take number, and here we are. Hit play. So that's at the highest fidelity it could be. That's a WAV file which if I'm a computer guy, I can immediately export that into any computer software program. I already have a finished track of piano music that effortlessly. So some of the things that are going on in this instrument, you can hear that there's been a lot of care in getting the 
sampling of each of the European pianos just right. But there's another element that's going on. There's something called modeling. And modeling is just a computer doing very fast math to catch elements of a sound that sampling alone doesn't. And I'm going to go to this uh, example here called Extreme Demo just to show what I mean. So remember this is digital so there's no strings inside yet when I step on the damper pedal now I can hear the sounds of all the felts lifting off the non-existent strings. That's done through modeling. Another example of something you can do on a grand piano, if you hold down some notes silently and press the same notes an octave up, you get the ringing of the overtones, the sympathetic vibration of those strings, even though I didn't press those. So this has been exaggerated to show the point of how realistic this piano is at capturing these other nuances. Sound, the undampened strings, all those things. So I can set each of those attributes to a value that I like, but I'm just using this example to show you how much control I have over the overall sound by changing each of these artifacts. Let's get out of that and back to something. So thanks for listening, and let's just play a little music. Thank you.